the studio to do justice to this discourse. I have a, yeah, they say once a journalist, always a journalist, a politician, an entrepreneur, a businessman, you just name it. A man I love so, so much. Join me to welcome Honorable Akarase Idubo. Welcome to the show, sir. I appreciate much. your coming. Thank you very much. All right. Sitting very close to him also is a legal practitioner. When you talk about local and um, international politics, he is well grounded. Join me to welcome Barrister Henry. Wow, so welcome to the show, sir. It's I appreciate pleasure. your coming. Wow, what Good a stretch. Good afternoon. Uh, um, and God bless uh, the viewers. Yeah. <laughs> it's a pleasure, sir. God bless us. Okay, yeah. here we are. Putin has been there. He's known as the strong man of Russia. Russia. And once upon a time, also, according to Forbes magazine, he was known as the most influential man in the world now when u.s and china are then making their bid so to speak right now for africa open it's like russia has been quiet they did it last year some years back but now there's this renewed interest in africa coming from the kremlin what do you think is going on let me start off with you honorable what do you feel about this development what is so special about africa yeah, it's not that it's special Af africa is a very major block Mm. No, we're a very major continent. Yeah. So it's not a question of being special now. That all they want is a share of the market. Uh, mm. Africa has proven to be a very veritable source of revenue for these big, big uh, players. Yes, Russia is now trying to reenact, reestablish their authority. Hitherto, they used to have power and opening towards the USSR, but now Putin is looking at a situation whereby he can also play in the big league. America, China, and uh, colonial masters have always taken charge of Africa. But now, they now believe, in view of the fact that there's a struggle, there's a struggle for who is superior now. Now, is it Wilson or Alarese or the mm -hmm. barrister, who is superior? So if all of us are looking at a source, if you are dragging, I feel that I also need to influence that. Russia has so much to offer Africa. And each time they come like that, I believe that there's no free launch even in free time. As they are coming, they also have some strings attached to their coming. Mm -hmm. They're going to put a lot of money here, a lot of investment here. But basically, I wouldn't use the word recolonize, but definitely to affect our sovereign nationalities. Mm -hmm. That's clearly. Because their coming must affect, because they, they want to be interested in how, now then, they, they have determined how two countries were elected their presidents. Mm -hmm. They're involved in the politics of two, two African countries, and records show that they influenced those elections. And what I think they want to do now is look at political power in Africa to their own advantage, or looking for how to bring in export, you know, and take part of our, take part of the economy of Africa. So it's important for them to come in here, play along with the U.S., China. Mm -hmm. Brazil and those other countries that are trying to take Africa from them, but they are coming now and offering more, much more juicy uh, conditions to Africa. Wow. Coming with juicy conditions to Africa, we have China on one hand, US on the other hand, and now all the superpower Russia trying to, is it help or take a bite? Anyway, Barrister Henry, how do you feel about this development? Uh, well, uh, to some extent, it is going to be for the benefit of the African states they are coming to do business with because they are coming to Africa relying on the fact that Putin has been there from 2000 up to 2014 to 15 when they had their problem, when the Crimea was actually an egg by them. That is where the problem started from. So they now looked at it that Africa is the center hub for now. They are in uh, uh, Central African Republic. They are in Democratic Republic of Congo, Sudan, even in Nigeria. They are all over the place. They have interest in the economy. They also uh, assist in terms of military training, like some of African countries. Uh, you, you, if you put your mind back in that of uh, CAR, that is uh, Central, Central African, African Republic, Republic. Yeah. at the time they needed weapons from their colonial masters, France, who tried to recycle the ones they took from uh, Somalia. You know, uh, Russia on their own objected to it. That's why. 
should they do that? What did they do? They uh, approached the United Nations, who now gave them power. They supply them uh, ammunition to the moon. And presently, as we speak, they train their local soldiers. And they have their contractors who are everywhere in the mining industries in terms of the companies, the Wagner Group and others. Mm -hmm. They are there doing business. So politically, they are there. Economically, they are there. They are there for the interest of the Africans, as you may say, from one point of view. Just as my brother here said, it's a kind of... Uh, uh, is a kind of trying to colonize Africa again from another point of view, but notwithstanding the fact that they will have their impact in that part of the world in terms of our politics, because they determine not only assisting us in terms of uh, providing weapons and all that. We also see that some of our leaders that will, be, that you know, uh, that will come out of some of all these African countries will be determined by these. Uh, persons because they play a major role in terms of supplies of arms, in terms of the economic and all that. So at the end of the day, they will always be there. All right. Now, from what Barrister Henry talked about, he said it's to our own advantage. How true is that? It's mutual. It's mutual. Mm -hmm. It's mutual. Basically, well, you see, it's mutual to the extent that, yes, Africa will benefit, but if you push it on the scale, where does it wait to? Of mm -hmm. course, to the advantage of the Russians. But I will say all of this. When you have many persons, it's like a bride now, many suitors. Everybody wants you. Now, Af Africa is a very major continent in terms of population. And it's important to us. Russia, yes, like I said, you know, Russia is in 20 African countries now. Mm, 20, African 20 African countries. countries. And Africa has about 54, 54, 56 mm. states. I mean, they call them states in our countries. But I haven't said all of this. By the time they register their presence enough, my own worry, my own worry, like I read a few weeks ago, they are interested in the military strength of these countries. Mm. And if they take control, of the military prowess of any country, then of course, it, for me, it portends danger. Because all two countries that they have, you know, showed strength, determine who became president. And it's important for us to also understand that yes, it is to their own enlightened interest to support Africa. Africa is there is war everywhere in Africa, mm. so it's one way to export their weapons. To export their weapons. So it's important for them to. You know, get realigned. Who us? Who Africa? To an extent that they can determine who does what. Now, America. You know, America is showing some bravado. China is showing some bravado, and they just think, okay, fine, we are coming in. Hmm. We'll not, we'll not, we'll not make you feel inferior. Allow us to do business with you. We'll give you terms that are pocket friendly, and of course, now they are coming here. They're already here in Africa. I mean, they've they been in Nigeria for quite some time. I mean, uh, all are still rolling in the streets of Nigeria. The rail lines, you know, until mm -hmm. China came down. So they have been here for, for a very long time. And once they eat into your economy, of course, they will not be playing, you know, playing the, uh, playing the tune for you to be dancing. But I think, like you said, it's our advantage, yes. But it's more to their advantage because they're the ones to now export their expertise, their goods, their services to Africa. So I, all I believe is that yes, we will take advantage of their presence, of their coming to do more, more business, but we should also be careful. We should also be careful so that we don't get into a situation whereby they come in using the carrot and the stick. They come in, yes, try to force us to open our gates, they come into our, our house and take over. So we must be careful too, yes, in accepting their, their so to speak, bait. We must be careful not to uh, subordinate our sovereignty to their intentions. Mm. Subordinate our sovereignty to their intention. Now, some pundit of the opinion that maybe they are feeling left out <coughs> in global issues. That is why they choose to like dive into Africa, renew their interest in Africa. How true is that hypothesis? Now, to some extent, I strongly believe on that part because mm. if you look at it, after the sanction they had because of uh, the invasion of Crimea in 2014 mm. to 2015, Russia has never been anywhere as it were. 
in terms of these African countries. Accepted that before now, when they were USSR, they had a common block. It was a, a very strong force to stand America, stand uh, uh, Britain, uh, France, and others. But after the, uh, the disintegration, as it were, they never had that uh, strong force, as it were, to enable them to withstand all these uh, other countries. So the sanction that came 2014-2015, that was kind of uh, you know added more to what they have mm. suffered. So. Uh, the young, uh, the businessman uh, that lives in P uh, St. Petersburg now felt that the best way is to go out to this house because you use the word businessman. Is he a businessman or a president? Uh, no, I'm not talking about Putin. I'm uh, 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 you know, yeah. like a There's a, yeah. there's a uh, businessman in yeah. St. Petersburg. Who, so, who is driving the process? Uh, the person of uh, Yeganzi or something yeah. like that. That is his name. He's the one mm. driving the process. Mm. So, he's the one moving from this, all these parts of the world, uh, moving into Africa to do mm. business with them. Mm. Uh, you know, and because he's a strong ally of uh, Putin, mm. uh, you know, Putin has bought into his uh, idea. Mm. Uh, and uh, today, as it were, if there is no uh, part of, uh, uh, let's say, 20 states in Africa to be very sure of. Today, they are there doing business, as it were. They have their contractors who are in the mining industry. They have their uh, uh, military weapons, which they have supplied to all these uh, parts of Africa. They are also there doing business with them, ensuring that their soldiers are trained in guerrilla warfare and all whatnot. And where necessary, in terms of the economy, improving it, they have done that so mm. far so good. Wow. Wow. Because Paul is saying that though the man is in front, the president is the one really pushing this mm. drive. Anyway, mm. let's leave that. But now you talked about the military strength of African nation. Why are they interested in the military? I mean, that, that's all you need. That, that, that's, that's the firepower. Mm. That's the firepower. It, it shows strength. <laughs> the real strength is your military. If you don't have a strong military, of course, I cannot show strength anywhere. If I want to harass you, the only way you can you know, rebuff me is to show strength. strength. And the only way to show strength is how equipped is your military. Yes. And most of the where military, you know, military software and all that, they are from Russia. And Russia is known to have, so to speak, you know, very good military software. And once this has been established, the, the, the entire world knows that Russia is just there. And very basically, they, for me, I think they are, you know, their interest in Africa is a good one. But basically, they are interested in our resources. They want to get a big chunk of our resources. They are interested in coming to do business with us, all with a view to controlling they want to drive away America from here. That's mm. their intention, to drive them out of here, drive Britain out of here, drive China out of here. But it's not possible because those are, those are already entrenched you know, in, our, in our environment. But they are coming to play. Yes, it could take some time, but they believe that they can do business enough to make America, I mean, America has a stranglehold over Africa. Stranglehold over Africa. So they want to try to like reduce the the effect, you know, of their hold on Africa. Yes, China is one country that, that has done so much for Africa, but again, they also believe that they can also play. Even though China has a lot of advantages over Russia in this, in the, in the commercial sector. But after all of this, they think they will come in here, give Africa conditions that are friendly, not the same as they're getting from, you know, they have a lot of NGOs now they have set, set, put in place which they are going to start to allow to use, give out monies to various African countries. And all these are not a ploy, but I think they are putting all of this together to also allow them play in the big league. You know, the, the market has strictly been for, for um, US, China, India, a little, a little for Brazil. Now they want to come in and try to try to outplay or outrun the other countries. But again, it's, it's, it's a big market. Big market. Africa is a very large market. Mm -hmm. And I don't think, you know, even if you have another world power coming in here, Russia is a major you know, international power. If another, if another world power decides to come, the market is large enough. We'll let them keep coming. But one thing I keep saying to my, those who care to listen, don't ever subordinate your sovereignty to any of these 
all powers. Otherwise, if they take over, then they'll determine what happens in your country. Mm -hmm. And once they decide to determine what happens in the country, then you are finished. All right. Now, he talked about reducing the impact or the influence of the U.S. and, of course, China in the continent of Africa. Do he went further to talk about it being somehow impossible? Is this a kind of an extension of the fight between uh, uh, Russia and, of course, U.S. over supremacy in Africa? Is that what is happening right uh, now? Because Russia and China, of course, they are allies. But when we talk about the U.S., it seems to like, you know, make Russia to shroud a little bit. Uh, to some extent, I quite appreciate that position. Mm -hmm. If you look at it physically, before now, the West. Because when you talk about the West, you are looking at U.S. and others. Mm -hmm. USS are then, as it were, were the ones who were kind of trying to checkmate all the activities and actions that were being carried out by United States, who tries to be United Nations on their own. Because you know before now, all the actions that are being carried out by USS, uh, USA, it tends to seem as if they are working for United Nations. Mm -hmm. they, uh, if you, they have the issues, they look at it as if it is personal, as if it has affected them, as it were. So they were able to disintegrate uh, USSR. Mm -hmm. they are not, uh, they, at the end of the day, it now seems as if they were the only the ones remaining in the block. But China, along the line, gradually, as it were, from the part of the world it is, uh, they have been able to kind of show some strength too. But you also find out that China, the strength they have shown, they, uh, theirs is not like that of USSR that as it will use to be. So USSR have looked at it at this point in time, they are not doing well in and they need support after that uh, invasion of Crimea in 2014-2015 at the sanction which has affected them as it were. So they needed support. And the only block that is they look at they, they can get the support is Africa. Because in Africa once you are able to get here, uh, because we are part of the uh, United Nations. We, some of the countries, we have our vote, we make our vote too, as it were. Mm -hmm. So, so US, uh, Russia, Russia now feels that coming to Africa to do business with Africa, we go a long way in boosting their own position, as it were. Mm -hmm. And if possible, we'll come back to become a common force, because we will want to support them. But most African countries, as it were, we want to always, the uh, U.S. We want to uh, lord it over them, and they will not want to buy that idea as it is. So with the coming of Russia, it will act as a kind of check mm -hmm. to some of the activities you know, being carried out by U.S., as it were. But be that as it may, that Russia is in Africa, it is for our own good. I believe it is for our own good, military-wise, economically, politically, as it were. Because the African countries, they have been there presently, like the CAR, um, Nigeria, they are in different areas oh. trying to improve the economies of this country. They give out grants, as it were, train their uh, military in the handling of weapons and uh, ensuring that most of them, those uh, modern day uh, weapons are, you know, are uh, sent to their countries for their use in terms of military uh, uh, activities, mm -hmm. as it were. All right, if you just joined us, this is Africa Discourse. We're taking a look at the renewed uh, uh, Russian interest in Africa, the impact in African growth. That is what we're taking a look at this afternoon. Well, uh, Barrister Henry Walzo talked about the UN, talked about the politics in the UN, talked about Russia trying to come into Africa to like Ghana support from Africa. Don't forget that the collaboration between China and Africa very succeeded in giving China vital position in the UN. Yeah. Anyway, when we return after this break, we're going to talk more on this particular discourse. Is it all about positioning in the UN or there is something about Africa that Africans don't even know that these countries, they are wealth and they are trooping in mass into Africa to do business with us. We'll be right back after this break.
Thank you, thank you so, so much for staying tuned. It's all about the related interest by Russia in Africa. You know the impact on African growth. Now, before we went on that break, he talked about positioning in the UN. And the last election, China used African bloc to get a juicy position in the UN. Is that what Russia is trying to do right now? So the, the UN, mm. UN is, you know, America is UN, UN is America. Yeah. I mean, mm. if, if, if America is majorly the, the biggest player in the UN, mm. and very honestly, they have positioned themselves so well that in trying to struggle power with them, you need, you need times four of their own efforts. But I can assure, I can assure you that in the, in the next five, ten years, Russia will have leveled up. And the way they are, the way they are doing now, I, I foresee a situation where America will be trailing behind them in Africa. Because they, they, they believe, Russia believes that, yes, we are a power. We are a, we are a, Africa is a good block. But we also have so much. America has, America has everything. That's, that's their own advantage. They have, they have everything. They have military, economic, political. But Russia has military. Little political, little economic, but America, the, the advantage that America has over, over all of them is they have all three. So basically, but Russia is coming, you know, trying to brace up and take a good chunk of the market, and which is very important in all of this interest. One, they're interested in mining, the very important mineral exploring areas, they are already in charge, they're interested in oil and gas. They are involved in our oil, oil industry. Mm. They are interested in aluminium. They are interested in iron and steel. So very basically, they are coming to African countries to also bring manpower and also be part of the determining of the economy of Africa. And once they do all of that, for me, it will, it will benefit the bride, Africa. Mm. If everybody is coming to war, it trying was. to bring in investments, if the investments are here, who will benefit is, is, is in our own interest to let them come. But once they come, and they come to stay, they'll be able to determine a few things in Africa. And for me, what do we, need to, what do we have to lose? But we can lose everything but not, not our sovereignty. Mm. We can lose everything but not our sovereignty. But I've said of this, I, I just see, I see Russia's intervention in Africa. They need to defend their authority. They, they, they need to also prove to the US, to China, to our colonial masters, they are, they are, that they are also capable of doing what those people are doing that is making us to gravitate towards them. Was that? Hmm. So now they want to say, okay, fine, please come back. We can provide for you what they are doing for you. So just stay with us. And it's like, like, like my brother, you say, it's all about power. Africa in the Africa in the UN, we have a block. We have a block, a very strong block. block. So every, every, every world power needs Africa. Hmm. So our block is very, very uh, functional. So very honestly, in doing business with us too, they also need to get us to support them should the need arise. So it's important for any world power to look into Africa. One, we have a population, a good population, a very good population. And two, I won't say we are poor, but... We have no. You know, we, we need some. We need some. You know, salvation. Yeah, from salvation. <laughs> and they, they see us as needing help. Needing help. Mm. Of course, they see us as needing help. Mm. So they think what to come and give us help. So as soon as they come in here, the the first thing is to give us a carrot. But they can bring the stick later. Yeah, later. Because they, they see Africa, Africans need help in various forms. Need help economically. Need help politically. Mm. Socially, in the military. Mm. So since they can provide this help, they'll keep coming. But I want them to come, do what they want to do with Africa, and don't take Africa from us. Mm. Don't take Africa. Africa from us, because we'll come back to that particular statement, don't take Africa from us. Now, he talked about Russia trying to level up with the U.S., and of course, uh, the likes of China, even the EU, they are all trooping into Africa. But the latest renewal right now is coming from Russia. Russia. Like what you rightly said, both of you affirm the fact that Russia, they are positioned right now in 20 out of 24 countries in Africa. Is this a method or a step in leveling up with the U.S. presence in Africa? 
that is the position. And that is the way I look at it because they have looked at it that for so many years, the, no, when, when anybody is talking, you are talking about China, you are talking about US. Mm -hmm. Nobody talks about Russia. Nobody, uh, you see people who want to travel out of their countries, either the person is going to China for business or the person wants to go to uh, America with his family and all. I have never had anybody say, I'm traveling to, China, uh, to Russia, yeah. as it were. So Russia wants to be seen as one of the power plays in the world, just as they used to be in the days of USSR. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, the man who presently is there, Putin, never looked at this point at the time he came in 2000 up to this point in time before the businessman from St. Petersburg, mm. his uh, ally, now felt that there's no way we can succeed as a nation. There's no way our days as a strong nation will come without us going to this part of the world because everybody is going there. There's no... Uh, there's no uh, there's no part of Africa you go today, you will not see the Chinese people playing one role. Either they are in their rail, doing business in their rail section, or they are in their, the ports or wherever. Presently, as we speak, that Russia is uh, in Africa. They are there politically, economically, and in terms of the military. They are talking about building a port in Eritrea, uh, building uh, other companies in Djibouti and others. Mm -hmm. So you find out that the essence of them coming is to become a power with America, though it might not be going to be as easy as it is. But mm -hmm. I know with time, you know, when they have been able to formidably stand their feet in Africa, they equally will be looked at as one of those world powers, mm -hmm. as it were. The, the, the speed rate line in Mozambique, mm -hmm. yes. Mozambique, it's been, it's been done by, by Russia. Russia. Mm -hmm. It's going to be the fastest, fastest rail system in Africa. In Africa. Wow. Fastest, you know. And they are, they, are also, they are also coming to, you know, in Zimbabwe now, because the Chinese took over Zimbabwe, they are going to compete with China. Is in Zimbabwe, and Russia is putting so much money in Zimbabwe now to make, okay, not to reduce the influence of China, China. in Zimbabwe, mm. and they're putting so much money, and all of this, the whole idea is to reduce the influence of this other earlier world powers. World power. mm. Because when they finish speed break in Mozambique, sorry, the speed train in Mozambique, it will be a destination. And like you said, Russia will soon be a destination. A destination, exactly. You know, even though people don't talk about Russia, yeah, right. Russia still, by way of education, Russia still has the best institutions in the world. Hmm. They may not have been classified like the Oxford, well, the Cambridge, you know, Cambridge, Harvard, but they have a very great system of education that people, still, you know, my son in law, for instance, hmm. is studying in Russia, and he's a fantastic engineer. Is a fantastic engineer. Yeah. Wow. So very basically, Russia will come in, they will do a few things that will interest us by way of development. Mm -hmm. And these two African countries that are getting this support now, they will have these two train systems, and that will be so wonderful. So for me, in coming to Africa, Africans must make place a demand on them. The kind of demand that will say, this is the area or areas we want you to assist us in. Not them deciding for us what they want to do here. We'll sit down, yes, fine. This is what you, because most times they come and they dictate what they want to do. Mm -hmm. We should also sit down and say, okay, fine. This is fine, but we also think that this is the area that we want your intervention. And you must set that from the very beginning. Otherwise, if you don't give them some little, you know, uh, not that they you now, but let them understand that you also can think. They should not be thinking for you. Most times they think for Africans. They think for they, they think for us. It's like if they come into Nigeria, for instance. Now, the Foreign Affairs Minister of Russia comes, comes, comes into Nigeria. Wants to go to a meeting with our president. Who are the persons that will go and discuss? Hmm. So we must put in place a team of persons who understand hmm. the elements. The elements. But most times, you are going to discuss business. You take people who don't even understand the elements. So for me. I think Africa should start to think for themselves, put in persons who should there be the need to look to say this is what we want. They'll be ready to say, yes, now you are thinking straight. Otherwise, they'll just come, 
they, they know that you're not thinking straight. They just put in place what they want to do, mm. and they just start to do. They do. They do business in your country without you even understanding. And before you know it, they have depleted your resources, depleted your everything in your, your country, only to find that ah, by the time your eyes are opened, they have finished everything. Mm. So you must, at this point, Africa must be very alert. So as they are coming in, you are opening your eyes, you are seeing what they are doing, so that they will not deplete yourself before you even know. So you must know from the very beginning what they want to do and how they want to do it. Mm. That's, one, that's my only uh, worry about Africa. Right. We must be able to say, yes, welcome, but let's sit down and discuss. Mm. Let us know where you are going and where you are coming from. Mm. So that at the end of the day, every one of us will know where we are going to end. So we must know the end from the beginning. So that you, you, we, don't, we don't start at midway. We start to complain. Mm. So we must start to look at at every segment as we go on the journey, where are we going to? At the end point, who is benefiting? That's my point. All right. Now, he made a very vital point. Talked about knowing the end from the beginning, so to speak. But from your own analysis, Barrister Henry, take a look at what is happening in some countries in Africa that are owing chunk, I mean, large chunk of money to foreign powers, like the US, like China. Are we really taking advantage of the influx of all these great powers into Africa? Can we really tell the end from the beginning, or we are just flowing with the tide? They don't want to, I mean, everything they want to do for us. Uh to, to some extent, no, because uh, before they come in, uh, the African countries, as it were, they are all sovereign nations of theirs. And uh, when they have their leaders, they are coming in, either their foreign affairs minister or their minister for trade or whatever is coming. They will come into the countries they want to come into. They will discuss the bilateral trade they want to go into, those things they want to assist these countries to do. There is always a discussion. And the countries will look at it critically, knowing fully well if the areas of their interest. But you also find out that in most cases, they come in because they come in to assist, especially all these countries where you have wars. They talk about their military, trying to train their soldiers, either in terms of guerrilla warfare and all what, supplying of arms to them. Because this is areas where mostly they try to assist. Then also they come in economically, uh, the military is usually the first area because as they come in, uh, in the military, like as they came into CAR uh, and some other <coughs> of African countries they came into. When, when they arrived, initially it was to assist them in terms of supplying arms and ammunition. They also took the advantage to bring in their companies that went into mining. And today, as we speak, they are, they are in some of these advantages, even acting as peacekeepers. Mm -hmm. So automatically, they took the advantage of trying to supply arms, of trying to assist in training of the soldiers to have you know, a kind of uh, impute in the activities that go on. You will also discover, just as my brother here already said, that even some of the uh, two African nations of recent, were the, their leaders were determined by these persons, uh, by, the, uh, by Russia. And that is the fact, because as, they, uh, as time goes on, they uh, assist you military, they assist you in terms of the economy. And they also would want to determine what happens politically, because they have their interest. They are going to build ports in Eritrea. Uh, 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 they have said they are going to build port in Russia. There are some other African countries, Djibouti and others, they want to build one. Just as he rightly said, in Zimbabwe, uh, Mozambique, they want to build a train station. At the end of the day, all these investments they are going to do, they will also want to monitor to ensure that they are functional. And in doing so, they will go to some extent and determine the man who will be there to pilot their affairs, to ensure that their own interests at the end of the day does not go the other way around. They will want to determine the man who will be there, will be the one that will not want to dance to the tune of the West. Because there are some leaders who dance to the tune of the West. So they will want, to, uh, they will want a, a, a person who will not, oh, I don't want to dance to the tune. Of this end, they, too, they, they, they are going to Rwanda and some other African countries. They want to be there. So they will want all these persons, at the end of the day, whatever thing they say, they should be able to have their own support, mm -hmm. but they will play their role in expanding their economy, in expanding their, their, their army, as well as providing military uh, equipment, weapons, and others. If they, uh, once all these things are done to the advantage of these countries they are going to, uh, I believe 
to some extent, because of the sovereignty of those nations, they will not say they are better right. Wow. See, you see, unlike China, mm -hmm. Russia is not discussing with individuals. Mm -hmm. Anywhere they have, they have gone to, to government, mm -hmm. government, they're not discussing with individuals. Mm -hmm. They're discussing with heads of government. So in effect, mm -hmm. when I was talking about, you know, putting a team, if they are going to discuss with head of government, so the head of government must have a team, a think tank, where you can discuss, if, for instance, you want to discuss like, like, you know, power, mm -hmm. and Russia comes to your country to discuss power, the people that will, that will come with you must be those who have competitive advantage to discuss power. No, no, well, you can't bring a man who doesn't understand and put him as part of your team. He will not understand. So I don't want to mention which head of state now. <laughs> went, went to a country to discuss bilateral relationships. <laughs> and the people he took there had no knowledge. No idea. Yeah. No mm. knowledge. Uh, but but it's, possible, it's possible their yeah. grandmothers and mothers were traders. <laughs> <laughs> he, he took, you know, I mean, he had no knowledge. So for, for, me, for me, that's not the kind of thing we should be talking about. So mm. Africa, mm. we must now, yes, it's good for them to come. But we must be prepared. So at the end of the day, it will be said that oh, Africa is knowledgeable. Africa is Africa. Russia is a good country, and mm -hmm. I like their policy. They discuss with head of government. No middleman coming in between. This. They will discuss with government, mm -hmm. and everything they want to do is with government. And government understands that yes, in this in this whole business, our country's interest is paramount. Mm -hmm. Unlike businessmen, mm -hmm. businessmen, unlike businessmen. Who would, be, who, who would not care what happens to the country, but they care about their pockets. Mm. But now they are discussing with the head of government. So you, ha you, have a, you, ha you have a responsibility to keep your country afloat. Mm -hmm. So very basically, they come to every country, discuss with the countries. But I will say this, they have sent some signals to the other world powers that here we are, we have come. We have come. And we have come to stay in Africa. because. I mean, for me, Russia, Russia, Russia is, is coming to like water down the influence of America, mm -hmm. China, India. I don't know if you understand that Russia and India also have some little, little altercations sometimes. Yeah. You know, they, they were struggling to possess one, one small African country. And Russia just said, India, you have population, we also have power. India became a world power by population. I mean, Russia became a world power by armament. Armament, exactly. So, you know, choose one. Uh, so, uh, it's uh, like uh, a bitch. So, so and, and, you know, so yeah. it's, you know, but having said all this, yeah. yes, they are trying to build, you know, nuclear plants in Africa now. Mm. They have chosen eight African countries to build nuclear plants. In CA, CAR, for instance, Russia controls 80% of the economy. Mm -hmm. 80%. Mm. CAR is their is their base, their in, base. Africa. In, their base uh, their base in Africa. In Africa, they have chosen that place, and eighty percent of the economy of CAR is Russia. It's Russia. Wow. So I want to wish Africa well. <laughs> we just believe that yes, but for me, I'm happy. Hey. I'm happy as in Africa is the bride. Let them keep winning us. Yes, bring everything, but yes, yes, we must not toy with our sovereignty. sovereignty. Now, still talking about sovereignty and international relationship, don't you think it's going to cause altercation between these great powers? Because they're targeting one country, Africa, Russia, China, their allies, and of course, U.S., though they don't agree, don't you think it's going to cause a kind of an altercation? Uh, to me, it hmm. will cause an altercation, but we know but at the end of the day, African countries will be the ones to benefit. Are because, you sure? Yes, because we are the beautiful bride for now. Everybody wants to marry us as it is. And we are ready to marry who is ready to marry us. And those ones who have what it takes to make Africa a nation that our people will no longer be wanting to travel to China or travel to America. If all the things are provided for us, what business do we want to have to travel to China or to travel to America? So if all what makes all these developed countries, as it were, can be brought down to Africa in terms of rail, in terms of road, in terms of military might, in terms of uh, economy, and we have leaders who have the interests of the people at heart, nobody will be bothered. So we will be ready. 
to receive them. At the end of the day, we will be the ones to benefit from it. Mm. That is my position. Mm. No, now, we that this is the period of emancipating <laughs> Africa by this great part. Yeah, exactly. Is it? Or they are here to drain it finally? No, they are no, not. They are I mean, they're, they're, they're investing. They're investing. You know, there must be a return wow. on your investment. investment. <laughs> I mean, there just must be a return on your investment. Mm. Like, like, like I did say, you know, if you have a beautiful bride, like Africa is, mm. Africa is a bride. The, a, a girl has many parts, mm. like a man, a man. Maybe he is seen the leg of the girl. Mm. Maybe, I'm, maybe I'm seeing the hand of the girl. Mm. And you are seeing the face of the girl. Mm. Fine, the girl is there. Okay, you are seeing my leg. Okay, repair my leg. Repair my leg. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you are seeing my face. Okay, repair my face. Mm. You are my hand. Repair my hand. At the end of the day, the girl is just there. Uh, and the model. Yeah, yeah, everybody is contributing. Mm. But very basically, the girl should be careful. Because by the time everybody is there from one source, mm. everybody is doing power, then of course, then you have to be careful. So that's why Africa must reposition herself so. in a manner that at the end of the day, all these, all these suitors, mm. they will not drain you to the point where you become useless eventually. Because at the point, they might choose to leave you and run away. So in running away, you must also have ensured that you have screwed them enough mm. that even when they choose to disagree with you, they cannot do a collateral damage to the economy. Mm. Because most times when you see countries going away, like when Russia, when, when USSR pulled out of some, con some countries, took off their ambassadors and those countries were like in trouble. They collapsed. Yes. Even when U.S. left Afghanistan yes. also, they collapsed. They were in trouble. Yeah. So they're in trouble. So what I think Africa mm. should do is, yes, now they are winning us, but in that, mm. you must also start to tie the knots. So when they choose to leave, I mean, they can't do you a collateral damage. Mm. So for me, it's fine. Yeah, that will you, but you must ensure that if they choose to leave, you are still yourself. Wow, if they choose to leave, yes. you are still yes, yes, yourself. Yes, yes. Now, uh, do you think this will now cause a kind of a confusion, so to speak, right now in a systemic engineering of Africa to know the nation to align to? Yes. You see, all these countries coming together, who are we going to support right now, at least uh, to get a maximum benefit? Yes. Is it uh, confusing? Uh, it will lead to confusion, but mm. at the end of the day, the African countries will sit down and look at where they will benefit most. Because mm. the the country who is ready to do all that it takes to make your nation a better place for you, mm. that we assist you to ensure that your people are no longer migra migrating, traveling to the Sahara Desert, mm. to the Red Sea, and all whatnot, you will be happy to have such a, mm. a country. So I believe the African countries will be supporting the, the, those countries that will ensure that their economy is well developed. Those countries that will ensure that their military power is also well developed in the sense of training, provision of uh, modern uh, equipment in terms of fighting uh, any kind of uh, rather terrorism, crime in their society. Yeah. You also find that by the time these uh, countries come, there are certain things they will ensure, those things that make their place develop. They will bring it down. There's no two ways about it. Mm. Those things that make their place a place where people will want to travel down to, they will ensure that they will. So I know uh, Russia will ensure that those things that make their place what it is will equally be provided for these African, African countries that they are going. Because they need the support of these African countries. And this support they need is to ensure that they too become a, a rallying point, just as um, America and mm. China is today. Mm. I don't think that some countries, due to this influx of other countries, will not become or will be in the bad book of the U.S. They're doing business with Russia, so we're not going to have any business with you. Or they'll be like, come on, we're not going to give you the aid or the support we are used to be given. Was, mm. if, if you withdraw your own support, mm. and he gives me support, support. Mm. I mean, <laughs> it was a big deal. <laughs> was a big deal. You know, so you know, my, own, my, own, my own part of it is, yeah. at the end of the day, does that. It's, it, you know, I mean, Russia, for instance, we'll be talking to America, talking about trade balance. Mm -hmm. we, we, we cannot talk about trade balance here now. 
What are we going to balance? What, what can we give in return for their own services? Nothing. Mm. Uh, we, we don't have an equal to say, okay, fine, let us balance trade. America can talk to Russia, let's balance trade. Balance trade. They can talk to China, let's, let's balance trade. In, in Africa, what can we balance? Hmm. So they understand, <laughs> they, understand that, they understand that we are underprivileged. Oh, that. And that is, the, that is the more reason why we must not allow them to take us a ride. You can keep a dignified distance. Yes, you can be poor, but keep a dignified distance. Let them understand. Yes, yes, we will need you. But I've always told people, Russia, America cannot fight Africa for allowing Russia by, by opening our doors to Russia. It cannot. It cannot. Everybody has a competitive advantage. You know, what Russia has may not go to America, what America has. No, yeah. And what China has may not be good. Um, what, what, you know. So very basically, they, they offer different services and they're coming from different angles. So for Africa, Africa is just right to just accept all of them to come because they have different things to offer. But what are the things you need most? So if America chooses to say, okay, fine, now that you have opened the gates to Russia, bye-bye mm. to Africa, of course. But you see, again, it is because, because we make them feel that we are dependent on them. Otherwise, they should be begging us to come to their countries. Mm. But they see us as persons who are dependent. You know, they tell us don't come to our country. country. No, if they see us as, you know, we just come in there, not because we think we are taking come to take refuge or solace. We just come in there because we want to spend our money. We spend our money. But if they, they see us, if they see, they close, if they shut their doors, we'll be, we'll be begging. Why would, why would any, any Nigerian mm. go abroad for medicals? Why? Mm. The kind of money they spend on medicals abroad, you can put that here and develop Americans in Nigeria. Mm, yeah. So by start, they, they know that, okay, fine, they'll catch you one day. If you abuse us, we'll, we'll wait for you somewhere. <laughs> for you somewhere. So we understand that we don't need, we, don't, we, we need each other, yes, but mm. not as if we cannot do without we'll you. Do that you. So basically, what Africa should be thinking about doing now, yes, as this country as this country's come, we should also be developing Africa no, 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 to no, a no, point no. We are at a point we can be independent. All right. Okay. Either economically, mm -hmm. medically, socially, politically, we can be independent. It may not be too, but then independent to the point that we can stay off them. All right. So. Okay, thank you so, so much. I really appreciate the wonderful analysis. So, what advice do you have for African nations since these countries are trooping into Africa right now? Time is up. 30 seconds. To me, I should, they should welcome these countries as they come. There are so many things to benefit from them in terms of uh, economically, socially, and otherwise. They should take the advantage, as uh, most especially our leaders, to ensure that those things that make them to travel to these parts of the world are all provided for us here. Once the roads are good, the hospitals are there, the train system are there, the educational uh, system is well uh, organized, there will be no need for any African to say, I'm migrating. There's job opportunities because as they are coming, they should build industries where our people, our youths will work. Yeah, Those right. who are graduating should have opportunities of what right. to do. Okay. Once all these, and our leaders should also learn to uh, understand that the fact that they are asked to take care of the common wealth. It is not their private wealth as it were. Thank you. Answers. Thank you so, so much, Barrister Henry Wazo, for your closing line. Honorable, 30 seconds, your last line advice to African nations. One word. African leaders should provide effective leadership. You've heard it from both of them. Provide effective leadership and, of course, Put something on the ground by the leader so that we will not want to go to those countries to start seeking for help or migration. A wonderful analysis from my guests. You've heard them. They are on point in their analysis. Well, tomorrow will be time for International Forum. You wouldn't want to really, really, you would want to take a peek. Well, that'll be for tomorrow. <laughs> Bye for now. <laughs>